Molo Sambonani, hello, how's it? Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Friday, yeah, boy, yes. <laughs> morning, welcome to it. It is a Friday. Happy Friday, people. My name is Sikle Ngobese, a.k.a. Big Daddy Liberty. This is Vuganazo, your morning news analysis show. Oh, let's kick it off, people, with some excellent content. And remember, on Friday, we have the usual, either champ of the week or the moomish loser moment of the week. We'll get to that later in the show. Before any of that, remember, your price of admission here on Vuganazo is to hit that like button. Yeah, boy, do it right now. Smash that like button, whether you're watching the simulcast on Facebook or on YouTube. If it is YouTube in particular, do me an even bigger favor by subscribing to the channel. Join the over 38,000 of you who are now subscribers on the Big Daddy Liberty channel. Help me reach my goal of 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Now, you can also support us financially here on the Big Daddy Liberty Show. Guys, anything between 50 to 100 Rand a month that you can pledge via the Big Daddy Liberty uh, website at BigDaddyLiberty.com. You'll find a payment method that suits you there. That's BigDaddyLiberty.com. Now, enough with that jibber-jabber. Let's get straight into the news. All right, I take you now to Durban, Eteguini, indeed on the outskirts of Durban in the township on the north of Durban of Guamashu. That's just, as I mentioned, on the north of Durban. It forms that INC uh, acronym area of Inanda, Ntuzuma, and Guamashu. And uh, a lot of people live in that part of the world. Unfortunately, for those who live in, in and around Guamashu's hostels, the violence in that part of the world is absolutely insane and indeed this past week it has been indicative of that where four men have been gunned down in the guamashu hostels after a gang of allegedly 20 men stormed the hostels effectively going door to door searching for these men and a uh, shooting ensuing there i'm going to quote of course from this ewn piece which um basically spoke to police spokesperson robert netuinda and gave comment as follows. Now, in describing the incident, the police spokesperson said, quote, four people were shot and killed at Guamashu's men's host hostel on Wednesday afternoon. Three people were declared dead at the scene, whereas the fourth person succumbed to his injuries at the local clinic. Now, Nijoinda went on to say the police are still investigating the circumstances around the killing, end of quote. Now, I raise this particular issue because the violence in our hostels here in Durban is absolutely insane. It's the kind of stuff that really you would think is, you know, would form part of a movie, Hotel Rwanda, or, you know, some sort of biopic, biopic of, of a war zone, in a sense, where people often forget that there are ordinary South Africans who live in these hostels, ordinary, everyday working uh, Joes who live in these hostels, whether it's in Guamashu or here in Mlazi, the Glibland hostels in particular, which are insanely violent, and some of the most violent, wanted criminals uh, are harbored in these parts of uh, Durban. Now, why am I raising this issue? Because policing in these hostels has been found wanting and lacking indeed. In fact, to be brutally honest with you, if one c considers back and goes back to the Moirane Commission, which looked at the spate of political political killings in KwaZulu Natal, the hostels, Gliblands in particular, were fingered as being some of the areas where these hitmen are basically found and employed, paid uh, hard cash, of course, to commit these particular murders. The Moroni Commission also pointed out how the police are complicit in some of these cases. Every time you've ever seen a big police operation to raid these hosp hostels, looking for some of these wanted characters, killers and the likes, often police themselves have to enter these areas, these almost no-go zones, uh, v with very heavily armed specialized units, the TRT, the Special Task Force, for example, because they're insanely violent. Now, whenever I see that, I've always thought to myself, what about the ordinary people who live there, the, the law-abiding people, the salt-of-the-earth types of Africans who, whatever their circumstances, have had to live there in order to be close to work. And this is where the fine balance happens and why I always say South Africa is facing a crisis 
of the rule of law and law enforcement. And you often see it, yes, generally in the country, but certain microcosmic examples like the hostels really point to that. There is a sharp need to reform policing in this country, but actually, no, not, not reform, but rather tackle the culture of crime and cr criminality that we see in this country and is pervasive in places like uh, hostels rather like guamashus and here at Glipland. something has to be done and what really the beginning point is getting rid of a certain asshat of a police minister who's absolutely inept absolutely useless at that job and indeed almost a wholesale removing of the entire management structure of the south african police force starting from scratch and hiring promoting only the best of the best proven servicemen and women who are professional police officers not deployed cadres and indeed improving the quality of our men and women on the ground who don those blue uniforms better training better equipment and indeed much more resources and upskilling of a dedicated highly skilled detective class that can actually investigate crimes put together dockets and hand them over to prosecutors so that we have more of these killer type individuals like these 20 armed goons who murdered four people in those hostels behind bars and not in our public and let alone in our hostels wow it must be nice it must be nice to be a part of the political elites and government in this country you simply splash a billion rand on a foreign soccer team and no one even bats an eyelid what am i talking about of course well sa tourism or south african tourism department has proposed a three-year sponsorship deal with English football club Tottenham Hotspurs for about 42.5 million pounds. That's about 900 million rand with, the, as I mentioned, the English um, soccer team Tottenham Hotspurs. Now, in exchange, what are we getting for this 900 million rand, Clear, Surely, it's going to be fantastic. We're going to see South African uh, youth uh, enjoying a higher caliber of opportunity in sports. We're going to see the land of milk and honey when it comes to tourism and sports no <laughs> no that's definitely not what we're getting in exchange we're getting an investment they tell us in sa tourism getting uh you know kit branding so tottenham hotspurs will wear the logo or whatever the case of sa tourism they'll get an interview backdrop of branding match day advertising a uh, partnership announcement announcements training camps apparently in south africa and free access free access to tickets and stadium hospitality oh how is this vaguely justifiable this is another situation where anc politicians much like we saw with that 25 million rand flag remember that national flag nonsense another situation where these individuals who really <laughs> really really i've spoken before about the, the the real divide in south africa the real divide is between the faith flag family and freedom type south african you and me salt of the earth south africans the god-fearing law-abiding and family oriented south african who's barely making ends meet at the moment barely making ends meet in this atrocious economy it's us on the one side versus politicians government and the political elites who are enjoying the creme de la creme who can splurge 900 million rand here on a soccer team uh, deal a three-year deal with a soccer team or 25 million rand there on a national flag or any of the other frivolous vanity projects that they spend money on government by its nature is a wasteful institution that is why my ideology a liberty ideology a classically liberal ideology actually advocates for reducing not only the size of government reduce the size of its budget and reduce of course the bloated nature of government so that they have less money so that you dear south african have more money that's my ideology and you can see why my ideology would be much better off than what we're seeing right now in these sort of deals let me read of course from a news 24 piece that covered the story and wrote it up as follows <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, in a statement on Wednesday, Sisulu, that's the Minister of Tourism, uh, Lindiwe Sisulu, uh, spokesperson, Umpumzi Zuzile, said proposals were received by SA Tourism and processed by a project team before they were sent through to the Executive Committee and presented to the SAT Board. He's quoted as saying, essentially, the SAT proposal is to conclude a Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, with Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. It's non-binding, she says. Such a proposal must still pass master within the tourism ministry and is subject to the concurrence of national treasury to conform to government prescripts end of quote that is all government speak government government gobbledygook to basically say oops you guys have caught us doing this and you're outraged at us doing this oh no relax 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 it still must pass government master or ministerial master nonsense they were caught out doing this and kudos by the way to the daily maverick for breaking this particular story and they're now basically trying to backtrack as best as possible tottenham hotspurs themselves have come out and said yeah we confirm this deal it's definitely on the cards um Again, it begs, it begs the issue. For me, this is all actually relatively irrelevant. The real relevant part here is this is how government officials, government politicians, and indeed the, the whole statist um, edifice in this country thinks of money. To them, money is nothing but something to be splashed on what they like. And of course, as they do that, to pretend that it benefits you. It doesn't. Kill this damn deal and indeed get rid of the politicians and the whole political elite establishment who do this kind of things. Rather put the money and the resources into your hands. The faith, flag, family and freedom type South African. All right, it's that exciting time of the show. You know, of course, every Friday we do either a champ of the week, someone who's done something great or commendable or itself an, a great commendable act champ of the week or alternatively the mummish of the week <laughs> that individual or organization or actual stupid act that will then put on the show so you can have a good laugh at them we have two mummishes of the week this week the first mummish of the week is Andile Utama the useless commie leader of the black first land first party yeah that's right Ali Utama is our first mummish of the week and why well here's a guy who upon seeing a incident that we've covered on the show of the looting of a meat truck a truck that broke down on the RS66 uh, in the King Chichayo area, which when it broke down, a group then descended on the truck, held the driver at knife point, broke the locks, and then proceeded to help themselves. These rubbish individuals begin to help themselves to this meat, stealing, looting, and pillaging. The farmer who then stumbles on the scene recorded it, of course, and I brought you those images yesterday, and... Um, Andy Lutama, well, he loved the scene. He loved it. He called it uh, expropriation without compensation or expropriating meat without compensation, which, of course, is a communist policy that the likes of Andy Lutama and the BLF and the EFF and, of course, the ANC have been pushing in this country. He effect effectively admits that stealing theft is exactly what expropriating without compensation is or well, in, in this case he calls it their land and their cows what a absolute mummish and as i said yesterday and i'll repeat briefly now any idea that seeing people steal loot and pillage worse yet encouraging it goading it on and telling them to do it because they're black and because they're victims is a a soft bigotry it's a racist self-hating soft bigotry of low expectations and Utama, the leader of the black first land first party is a self-hating black leftist because basically in his view stealing looting and pillaging is exactly what black people should be doing and for that reason and Utama, the loser filthy commie is our first mummish of the week on to the second mummish of the week our second mummish of the week is a Doctors Without Border employee who was caught red-handed stealing that very same meat at the same incident. He is our second mummish 
of the week. Goodness me, it's delivered <laughs> this week or when it comes to mumishes of the week. Guys, anytime you're looting anything, anytime you're acting in that way, you are a mumish of note. This particular doctor without uh, uh, borders employee or Medicine Sans Frontier, uh, <laughs> took me a while to practice that. MSF employee was caught on camera at the scene of a looting incident, the same looting incident that uh, uh, saw the meat being pillaged from this truck. And he did this here's the mumish in a branded vehicle a branded msf vehicle now he of course appeared in the melmouth court he was arrested and appeared in the melmouth court he's been granted a thousand rel a thousand rand bail pardon me and it's said to, to appear again in court on march 6. that video you saw saw the farmer descend on the scene and have no one support him watch this this is the actual moment when the farmer descended on the scene and caught this guy in an MSF vehicle taking his stuff. What you doing? What are you doing? Why are you stealing my meat? There's a f***ing meat on the back of the van! Oh wait, I'm an You are supposed to be doctors, not doctors! Yeah, the driver, doctor without borders, NES. Well done, my man. How indecent are you as a human being? But it's wrong, you can see, this is the owner of the Hey man, look here, look here, look here. Hey, don't run away, don't run away. Nyak funa when I fell. Yeah, that's right. That little scene there is exactly why this employee is our mumish of the week. All right, folks, that's it from me on this, the Friday edition of Vugana. So I hope you enjoyed this week's worth of content. More of you are watching the show. Thank you so much for that. Remember, all you need to do to support me and to grow my reach is to just hit the like button and please, please, please share the show. Share it with your friends. Share it on all your social media platforms. It is greatly appreciated. With that being said, if you like how we start your news day, then you'll love what our friends over at The Daily Friend do. Uh, that's from Mondays to Thursdays. Thursday live at 1.30 p.m. That's dailyfriend.co.za. Now, guys, thanks again for watching. Hit that like button, please, on your way out. Share the stream. And, of course, visit our website at bigdaddyliberty.com. I'll see you on Sunday for Liberty and Friends at 8 p.m. But if I don't see you then, then ne Monday next week is when we meet again for Vuganazo.